Hello and welcome back to Ricketts Reef. Today we're going to do a three-step DIY how to make a glass aquarium. Uh, that's right, we're going to go step by step right on through and make a whole new tank. Alright, let's get moving. We're going to take this how to build a glass aquarium in three easy steps. The first step is going to take the most energy. That's picking a size and getting your materials and tools together. Your second step is going to be the most nerve-wracking, that's actually putting the aquarium together. And the third step is going to be the most exciting, that's testing it out to see if what you made worked. Um, I'm going to be taking some lemons and turning it into lemonade here. If you've been following my videos, I had a sump blow the hell up on me and dump like 40 gallons of water onto my floor. It wasn't a good day. But anyway, I've taken that sump, I've pulled it apart which is a DIY on its own, uh, but I've taken it apart, I'm clean, I've cleaned up most of the glass with a razor blade there, and a little bit of vinegar, and now I'm ready to move on. Picking my size. For this application, I'm making 17 long, by 18 tall by 12 wide. Odd size, but that's what I have, that's what I need, and that's what I'm going with. Uh, next is the materials. I've got the glass from the sump. I've also got some remnants from some other things, uh, windows, doors. You can pick up glass from Habitat, from Habitat for Humanity, I think it's called. That's pretty cheap, and a lot of cities have it. Uh, garage sales, Craigslist. You know, sitting around in people's backyards, if you spot it, you can maybe run up and offer them a couple bucks. Uh, glass can be found everywhere. Also, you're looking for non-tempered glass. Tempered glass is really hard to work with. I uh, can't really cut it, can't drill holes in it, so you want non-tempered glass. That's the good stuff. You can snap it quite easy, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Uh, tools. Let's see. Razor blade, as I mentioned. M measuring tools and a... You know, Sharpie always works best, a nice new one. Uh, glass cutter, you can get these from Home Depot um, or any home hardware type store. Uh, refreshments, definitely going to need some kind of refreshment. You know, pop, booze, whatever you like to drink. Something to grind down the edges of the glass once you cut it. I'm using a, uh, this is a sharpener from my knife set, or you can use a stone from the driveway or whatever you got going on around you and some silicone this is reef safe it's window and door GE silicone 100% silicone I've used it in many applications never had any problem as long as you let it set for at least 24 hours so got our materials got our tools now it's time to make the materials the right size as you can see this sheet of glass or hopefully you can see it it's too big for what we need, so we're going to have to cut it, and I'll show you how to do that right now. Alright, I'm just going to measure out my first piece here, draw my line, cut it with the glass cutter, biggity bam, that one's done. Maybe smooth out the edges. Just to let you know, I have never actually done this before in my entire life. This is my first time. So if it works, I'm showing you how easy it is. If it doesn't, and I'm showing you what not to do your first time. When you're measuring, depending on what, which way you're going to put the glass or which piece is going to go on the outside, you may want to compensate for the width of the glass. In this case, my glass is a quarter inch, two sizes are half inch. I want a width of 12. I'm going to have two pieces sitting on the outside, so I'm going to make a width of 12 and a half for the bottom piece. So here we go. Measure twice, cut once, twelve and a half. Twelve and a half. Grab your screw edge of some kind. Make sure you got your two points lined up. Make your marker. You don't even have to do this stuff actually. I just like to do it so I know where I'm running my tool about. It's not drawing too well on the glass. Uh, it's also good to move your straight edge back a bit because your glass cutter, wherever I put that, there it is, has a bit of a depth to it. So, just move your straight edge back a bit, and what you're going to do is you're going to run your tool along that line, scoring it. Um, you don't have to go too deep, 
just put enough pressure like you're holding a, a pen or a pencil. Uh, maybe a little harder than that depending on your thickness of glass. And you want to hear it score the glass. So here we go. Like so. Now it comes time to snap the glass. And what you'll do is you put this point of the glass cutter tool underneath your sheet. Doesn't matter which way you do it really. Uh, it's probably advised to put the side that has the most glass on the side that you're holding down. The side with the least amount of glass, you kind of want to put that on the side you're going to push down and create the the force to snap the glass along your score line. So there we go. Apply a little pressure. Bam! Just like that, we have a nice edge. So you've got your bottom piece all ready to go. Um, your edges are all nice and clean, uh, as clean as possible. I hi highly suggest using a bit of alcohol or acetone, or, or I think that's what's called acetone, on it just to prepare the edges a little more. Um, well, this isn't really a display tank, so I'm not going to go too heavy into cleaning it up. Once you've got all these things ready to go, it's time to start siliconing. What we're going to do is we're going to run one bead along the back panel there which is this panel here and we're also going to run a bead along the outside edges here those will be for the side panels and I'll show you what that looks like alright here we go uh, some of you might have noticed I got a little bit of I got my band-aid on here um, yeah I was just wiping stuff off the counter and yeah stupid me didn't use a brush there's a little piece of glass and bam right into the finger Anyway, it's part of the fun, battle wounds. So, you want a nice little hole in the top of your uh, silicone. And make sure you take a, a nail or something and prick the actual inside seal because once you cut that open, it still needs to be opened up further down. So here we go. Oh, there we go. So now what you want to do is you want to place it down with a gentle yet firm shove. And what you want to do is you want to put a bead on the bottom for your side panels. make a nice even square corner all right there we go we got the side and the front and the back panels all on uh, now what you need to do is kind of go around with the finger and wipe off the excess both inside and outside of the seams and then what we'll do is we're going to actually apply another full bead on the inside edges smooth them out with our finger uh, to give it a nice finish look and also to provide uh, extra layer towards leak protection you know that's what the silicone is there for first to hold it together and then to protect from leaks and the end of step two is just to let it sit and dry 
24 at least uh, suggested 48 hours before water testing it reason that for that is because silicone gets harder the more you allow it to cure um, 48 hours is the safe zone 24 is all right And here's the finished product of this how-to. If you have any questions, please leave them for me and check out the description on YouTube because I had to leave some stuff out due to time limits. Uh, please stay tuned. I'm going to turn this new tank into something special and that will be coming up soon enough. Take care and later.